we're going to find surface area of this curve here. So it's an exponential curve. We're already given the uh, min max x values. So first thing we need to do is look up the surface area formula. This is in the book, page 177. And it's written down right here. So we're going to need to get the derivative of the function, then square it. So the derivative of the function, then square it, then add 1, take the square root. And that happens to be uh, the first part of this answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and of course, y is f of x. So we're going to find f prime of x. So I wrote it out as a product here instead of a quotient. So that constant just stays where it is. Now we have exponential derivative, so 1.2x times derivative of 1.2x, which is 1.2, plus derivative of an exponential is itself. And then again, the chain rule, derivative of 1.2x, or negative 1.2x is negative 1.2. We'll factor out the 1.2. And that fraction will, of course, reduce nicely. Uh, what we're left with, there was an extra negative here. So it's minus e to the negative 1.2x. Now, I'm very tempted to use uh, fractions instead of uh, decimals. So 1.2, that's 1 and 2 tenths, or 1 and 1 fifth, which is 6, if I could write, 6 fifths. So feel free to use fractions instead. <clears throat> All right, so this is f prime, and of course this fraction simplifies to 1 half. e 1.2x minus e negative 1.2x. All right, so this is y prime. Now we're going to have to square this and then add 1 to it uh, to get this part of the answer. So let's start by squaring it. Now, this is the worst notation to write y prime squared because to anyone else, it's going to look like y to the 12th power. So you really need to drop an extra parenthesis and square. All right, so we square it. We're squaring the whole entire thing. So we have 1 half squared times e1.2x minus e minus 1.2x whole thing squared. Now, we have to FOIL this. There's two terms in it. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth, that's the easy part. All right, first term squared, so it's e to the 1.2x times e to the 1.2x. Uh, outside, inside, those will be the same, so there'll be two of them. So there's two of those, now last, the two negatives cancel to a positive, e negative 1.2x, e negative 1.2x. All right, so I'm writing out all the details because we're about to do some nice uh, algebra reductions here. What do you do when you multiply bases? You add powers. So this is e to the 2.4x. All right, add these powers, you have e to the zero, which is one common mistake is to say that that's zero, which is definitely not. All right, over here you add powers, e to the negative 2.4x. All right, one fourth times e 2.4x minus two plus e to the negative 2.4x. Okay, so that's y prime squared. Now we're gonna do one plus y prime squared. So we're gonna add one to this whole thing and we're gonna create some more space. I know you can't do this, but I can. We'll just push service area down. Oh no. Draw, erase. All right, we know it's A to B. A to B, there we go. Okay. We're gonna add one. Now, I can already see we're in fourths here. Uh, Let's just write it, we'll add one as four fourths plus, now I'm gonna distribute the one fourth to all three of these pieces. One fourth e to the 2.4x minus a fourth times two. Don't think too hard. We're gonna add fourths very soon, so we'll just leave it as fourths instead of writing it as a half. All right, last part, 
plus one fourth e negative two point four x. All right. Go one fourth e two point four x. Now my constants. I have four fourths plus or minus two fourths is plus two fourths. I should. You might be screaming, hey, reduce to a half, please. Just relax. You have to think about where we're going. And at the very end, I'm going to factor out a fourth, and then everything will be fine. All right, what else we got? Took care of all those except the very last term, one-fourth e negative 2.4x. And the reason I know these things are happening is because I've done this type of problem a million times. Well, probably only like 70 times, but close enough. All right, one-fourth factored out e 2.4x plus 2 plus e negative 2.4x. All right, and we're finally ready. This is 1 plus y prime squared. Uh, if I just throw a square root around it, equals so that one fourth the square roots to a half and then everything else does need to stay inside the square root or does it so I would say on this problem the calculus is actually the easy part algebra we spent Spent most of my brain power doing algebra here, and it's been a fun so far. What I just wrote down here should smell familiar. Look at that. It's almost exactly the same. What's the difference? Well, the only difference is the signs in the middle. Okay, so let's see if we can use what we knew before here. So I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna rewrite what's at the very top, except it's gonna be a plus here. And now, what's above? So the only difference is we're going to square it, except it's going to have a plus there. All right, that's quite simple. Uh, well, what happened to the square? Well, it's there and the square root. However, the square and the square root cancel out. Except I forgot to write the square root on the previous step. There we go. Uh, this happens to be a hyperbolic trig function, which shouldn't mean anything to you right now, but it will soon enough. Okay, so that is the simplified version right here. It's not going to get any more simple than that. All right, service area. So we're almost there. We just have to come up with a couple more pieces for surface area. So we're going A to B. They gave us somewhere way, way up here, 1 to 1.6. Uh, the 2 pi, of course, you can bring out front. All right, make sure this is F, not F prime. So I'm gonna go way back to the top, make sure you do, what I'm saying is you don't wanna use this right here. That would be very incorrect. Uh, F right here. All right, one over 2.4 times E 1.2X minus E minus 1.2X. I'm gonna just double check that. Yes, that's f of x times uh, one half. Now I'm just copying this line right here. So you got one half times e 
1.2x plus e 1.2x dx. All right, looks scary. Don't worry. We have some constants. Both of these constants are products, so we can bring them out front. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and we'll just, I want that. There we go. All right, let's get fancy. I'm going to cross that out with that. So we have pi over just the 2.4. That's the only constant left over. All right, e 1.2x minus e minus 1.2x. E 1.2x plus E 1.2x dx. All right, there is some algebra going on in the background that we've done. So we did A minus B squared, which is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. That's one factoring we've used. We've also used A plus B squared. Uh, that's the more recent one we used. Very similar except your middle term is positive. We're about to use my favorite. And these are called conjugates. And this, when you multiply, you get a squared. Now it's plus ab minus ab. I'll write it down, you shouldn't, uh, because those cancel out to zero. So the inside outside terms cancel out and you're left with in this case, it's negative b squared because you have one positive, one negative, making a negative b squared. And look at this. The last one I just wrote out is exactly what's happening here. Well, except the order is reversed, but it's the same thing. They are multiplying conjugates. So what we get, e 1.2 squared minus e minus 1.2 x squared dx. Still didn't do any calculus yet. Having fun doing algebra. All right, how do you deal with powers of powers? It's another algebra rule I'm sure you did not forget. a to the b to the c power is a to the b times c power. So you multiply uh, when you have a power of a power. So it's e to the 2.4x minus e to the minus 2.4 x, uh, you, you're multiplying that whole thing by 2, uh, so you do not get an x squared because you're not multiplying by an x, you're multiplying by a 2, so you're doubling it. All right, so how do you take this antiderivative? Finally, we've done enough algebra that our calculus isn't so hard. So I know the derivative and antiderivative of an exponential is itself, but it's either multiplied or divided by a constant. I'm going to take a guess. It's called guess and check. And I'm going to see if I take a derivative of this, do I get back to here? And using the chain rule, you would get 2.4 squared. So then you to divide by 2.4. And now we can check again and you take derivative you get either 2.4 chain rules multiplied by 2.4 canceling that now this one let's see if I multiply I will get that extra negative because yes the 2.4 cancels with the divided by 2.4 but you're gonna get an extra negative sign and we're done integrating, so you no longer write your integral. The way you keep track of these is with a vertical bar on the right side. All right, from here, you're just gonna plug in uh, these numbers, which just takes a little while. And that should be your answer here. Okay, one last comment on how I wrote things. Uh, as I was going down, uh, I originally I started out with y, uh, then, uh oh, then I took a derivative. Now down here, uh, it's still y prime, so I was just lazy and I just never wrote y prime here because it's the same as what was above. When I wrote something new was when we squared it, which happened down here, and then when something else changed, I added one. I wrote that down there on the left. 
And finally, when I square rooted it, then I wrote that down. But I didn't write down every single uh, thing on the left side when there wasn't any change happening. So I hope this helped you out. This was definitely some fun algebra. And by fun, I mean tricky.